Oh, there you go. I just want to make some video notes because I'm not so good at typing anymore and I forget where I put stuff. But I was uh, thinking the other day about hammers. How that there are so many sayings about hammers and, and they're kind of inaccurate, actually. Uh, one of them, that the first one that I thought of was that uh, if you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Well, that's not right because there are hammers that are that never touch a nail, actually. There's uh, blacksmith hammers that can be used for anything from pounding out flat metal to shaping and finishing and little tiny hammers for engraving. Uh, there's uh, mason's hammers that can uh, shape rock and, and make buildings from it. There are sculptor's hammers that can take a piece of granite and turn it into a beautiful statue. And there are carpenter's hammers that drive tacks and nails and uh, railroad uh, hammers that drive spikes. There's all kind of different hammers. The, the thing is choosing the right hammer for the job. That's, that's what's important. Uh, <clears throat> just like there are many gods in the world, but there's only one true living God, one right God, one right choice. We need to keep that in mind when we deciding what to do, what to use, you know. I've heard people argue that uh, that the worship of Satan existed uh, before the worship of Jesus, and that's true, but not before the worship of God. The one true living God uh, had to exist before Satan could exist, because the word Satan, Shatan, is, is a Hebrew word that means enemy. It means uh, the perfect enemy, the arch enemy. And uh, you can't be an enemy of something that doesn't exist. So the worship of God and his chosen people, which at that time was Israel, but before Israel, it was the Hebrews or the Hebrews, the shepherd kings. And <clears throat> before that, it was just it was Abraham, you know, the lineage of uh, Adam to Noah to Abraham. But uh, God had to exist and the worship of God had to exist in order for an enemy to exist uh, so the right hammer for salvation for that job the right hammer was used on Calvary when it drove the nails through the hands and feet of Jesus making him our supreme sacrifice of course it wasn't the hammer that did it nor the sacrifice that did it it was the fact that he was the son of the living God and his sacrifice saved our soul but uh, the old hammer the old adage you know if you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. It's inaccurate. It's not right. Uh, we, we need to choose the right tool for the right job. And if Jesus, if you're looking for salvation, there is, uh, it says in, uh, I think the fourth chapter of the book of, of Acts, um, that there is salvation given under, uh, there isn't, oh yeah, I forget how it says it, but that uh, our salvation is through Jesus Christ and you can't get it any other way. It's not given uh, under heaven among men. It's the, the only name is Jesus Christ. The given under heaven among men whereby ye must be saved. So there's no other salvation except through Jesus Christ. <coughs> Excuse me. Another old adage that uh, is used is dumb as a bag of hammers. <laughs> and I've heard that with so many times. Oh, you dumb in a bag of hammers. Well, hammers actually in the, in themselves have no intelligence, I'm sure. But because so you can't be dumb as a hammer. But a hammer is as dumb or as clever as the hands that hold it. All right. So I don't want to be intelligent or clever in myself. I want to be. I want to be the tool that God chooses when it, when I'm needed, when uh, when I can be useful. If I can be constructive, if I can be uh, useful, if I can be clever for the Lord, praise God. Let's go for it. Uh, but you take there's a show that I like to watch. It's about a guy that makes uh, things with with it's called Iron and Fire, and uh, he 
makes things from metal. His, uh, his smith, not the name, he actually makes, he's a blacksmith. He's a coal-fired uh, smith, and he makes things. And he has on a wall behind his forge whew, dozens of hammers, dozens. You can't take a little old foreman, a little old tack hammer, and pound out a big old piece of metal flat to be used for a blade or a shovel or a, or a spear or a, or a frog gig or a whatever. You cannot do it. <clears throat> you have to have a big hammer for that. So again, it's the right hammer for the job. Now, I'm sure that Smith would tell you that he uses every one of those hammers. And every one of them has an assigned purpose. Well, the church in that sense is likened to a, a, well, a bag of hammers. They're not dumb. Each has a use and a purpose. What's dumb is to take a bag full of hammers and not take the hammers out of the bag and use them for the specific purpose. You can take a bag of hammers and beat on a nail all day and never drive that nail. But if you take the one out that is designed to drive nails, well, you'll get something built. If you take the one out that's designed to pound the the metal flat and make it useful, you get something done. If you take the one out that's used to, to tack, tap the, the chisel to make a beautiful engraving, well, you'll do something creative and clever. The thing is that every hammer in the church has a purpose. What uh, the pastors and the preachers need to do is pay attention to that individual's specific gifts and then choose the right hammer for the right job. You know, if you need a hammer to build up, there are people in the church that, that are wonderful at building up people's broken hearts and broken minds and helping them build their uh, uh, relationship with God back up. The, uh, an exhorter. They exhort the people to move forward for the Lord, to grow in Jesus Christ. That's their purpose. There are people in the church whose job is to create beautiful music and uplift the souls and the spirits of people when they're in the church. And they're like that little engraving hammer. They can make beautiful things happen, praise God, through the, through the Lord, not through themselves. But they have that gift. And to not use that gift is dumb as a hammer. You lay a hammer down and it's going to lay that. It's not going to do nothing. But if you pick that hammer up and put it to use, something can be built. Something can be done. Uh, there are preachers in the church that are like that big hammer that hammer out those rough spots in, in the steel and make it flat and formable and usable. Praise God. And then there are, there are ministers that come along behind them that are somewhat smaller that begin to form and use as God says to do. What we've got to remember is each of us has a purpose. Praise God, there's there's a purpose for every person in the church. Now what about them little bitty kids? Them little bitty kids serve a purpose. They are growing tomorrow. They are the building of tomorrow. They're working on the next, next generation of Christians. We need just to remember that every hammer has a purpose and each hammer must be used individually for that purpose or you could use several hammers together to like like we was talking about the steel that one flattens it one forms it one shapes it one engraves it and you end up with a beautiful tool or or weapon or whatever that it is a blade or whatever it's beautiful in the end because each of the parts worked in concert for the final product. And that's beautiful. Man, that's, that's something that we need to hold on to. We need to remember. Praise God. And in the end, something beautiful will be made from something as dumb as a hammer. Sometimes I consider myself that dumb hammer. But praise God, the artisan in whose hands I am is intelligent and creative and beautiful and can use me perhaps to shape something beautiful. 
and that makes life worthwhile.